Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about how to build a better ad. So if you are a window cleaner or thinking about it, it's going to be a good show. Stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, you're checking out the show, you have hundreds and hundreds of episodes to catch up on. We've been doing this for years now, and uh, it comes out every single Friday, so go back, watch anywhere podcasts are available, and it's also on YouTube. But if you are one of the OGs, if you've been around since the beginning, if you've watched all the episodes, or heck, most of the episodes, you've given our videos thumbs up, you've followed me on TikTok, and more importantly, you buy your supplies through me, shameless plug, every episode. <laughs> well, thank you. It is because of you I get all those awesome virtual high fives. Uh, you guys make my day, everybody who puts orders in. Um, yeah, any order comes in, I want to be your rep. That is what I do for a living is I put orders in. I help people, and that's what I want to do for you. So if you have any orders, any window cleaning supplies at all, Shoot me a text, 862-312-2026. A couple things with that. I want to put all your orders in. I see a lot of you guys who I put lots of orders in for, but I don't put all the orders in for. Let me put them all in. I would definitely, definitely appreciate that. One other thing, too, is people always, uh, over the weekend, like middle of Saturday, Sunday, they're like, oh, I just had to put my order in. Nothing ships till Monday. So if you're in a huge rush over the weekend, it's not going to ship till Monday. So any order can go in still Monday. So don't ever worry uh, about giving me a whopping, you know, 10 minutes. If you don't answer me in 10 minutes, I'm going to put the order in myself. I have to get it ordered. Nothing changes. So I just want to put that out there because a lot of people are under that misconception. But that's what I do. So 862-312-2026 is my cell phone and I want to be your rep. And I want to give you a high five of awesomeness. So thank you, thank you very much. Um, shameless plug number two, real quick, is American Window Cleaner Magazine. If you didn't know, there is a magazine dedicated to window cleaning. All window cleaning, business, cool pictures, posters, stickers, of course, all shipped to your door. So if you want to support the industry, if you want to be the, 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 the BA that you are and dominate, get American Window Cleaner Magazine. Go to awcmag.com forward slash sub. Get a subscription. Be awesome. Yes, it's a paper magazine. Yes, it's something you can read on the toilet. But more importantly, you are supporting the industry and the awesome culture that we have. So definitely check that out. But today, we're talking all about how to build a better ad. I bring this up because the time of year that I'm actually recording this is spring we're coming out of spring kind of starting to trickle into summer and your ads need to be on point right now if you're listening this week it comes out you need to have killer ads and you need to be advertising right now but jersey i'm busy i know that's why you're advertising right the best advertising for mcdonald's is during dinner time right i mean obviously when people are hungry they could be persuaded very easily. When people want to get their windows cleaned, they will pick you very easily. We're talking ads, new people, creating that reoccurring um, reminders, right? But there's certain ways to create ads. Unfortunately, I know a lot of people out there who build ads because that's what they like. They put something together like, this is so cool. I think it's so awesome. Oh, I love it. Okay. Who, who else did you ask? Who'd you talk to? Did you give it to like a random family member and tell me what you think? No, no, I like it. Okay. Well, you're not your target audience. You're also a person who really knows window cleaning. There's a lot of things that you just kind of doing yourself and understand yourself kind of doesn't much make sense, right? So you need to create ads that speak to other people. And there's a bunch of different ways to do that. There's a bunch of different things that you really need to look at, you need to focus on, you need to improve on. And here's the thing. If you ever think that you've built the absolute perfect ad, you would duplicate it 
and you would let it run a billion times. That's just what would happen. Because what ads are is just like building an ATM. It really, really is. If you can build something, like hypothetically, if I said, if you give me a dollar, I'll give you $2 back. Well, you're not worried now. Oh man, I don't want to give them like $5,000. That's a lot of money. Well, yeah, but I'm guaranteeing, I'm just going to hand you $10,000. Like if that was the case, now you're not worried about the money you're spending. You're worried about the money you're making. That's ads. Once you get to that point, I know guys who are doing $10,000 a month in just print pricing. Just how much print they're buying is $10,000. And you're like, oh my gosh, that's so much. Yeah, but if you have it dialed in where every $10,000 you spend, you're making $50,000 back, it doesn't matter. You're going to spend as much as you want that you can comfortably handle getting more income back, right? That's ads. Ads are ROI, return on investment. You need to create an ad so that you can make more money back than you spend with the ad. But you have to always be building this ad. You always have to be doing all of these things, split testing, we'll talk about that in a second, but you have to focus on all of that. And the number one thing that you need to focus on to build a better ad is the who. You need two who's. Two who's? I don't know. You need two. You need to know who you're advertising to, and you need to know who you are, right? So USP and avatar. I always talk about USP and it always saddens me when I ask. Uh, but what's your USP? What makes you unique? Oh, I do the best window cleaning. People just really like me. Wrong. What's your unique selling point? The only time that somebody likes you or nobody cares that you're cleaning a window that great, right? 90% is 100%. But the only way they find that out is after they already hire you. After they already hire you, right? So your unique selling point, the reason people made you buy, if there's 10 of you lined up, they don't know anything about any of you, there's no referrals, why would they pick you? You need to know what you have that makes you unique. If you know that, you know what to advertise. But more importantly, who's your avatar? Who are you advertising to? Now, if you're advertising to women, say your avatar is a stay-at-home mom with two and a half kids and a dog and a cat. If that's your avatar, meaning most of the people fall into that category, then you talking about golf is not going to pass. You talking about having a beer with the buddies is not going to speak their language. You're advertising now to a guy, right? If you do an ad with bowling in it, you're not necessarily going to be advertising to a stay-at-home mom. You may be advertising to a blue-collared man, right? Blue-collared people are going to be bowlers more than white-collared people who will be golfers. I know that sounds so stupid and you're like, you're classifying in general life. First off, shut up with that. Because when it comes to marketing, that is literally what it is. You can find out anywhere online, if you really want to nerd out on this whole thing, avatars, person you're selling to, go find out who uh, Coca-Cola's uh, 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 marketing targeted group is. It's younger people. You'll see exactly what it is. Then you go and you can find all the ads and all the ads make sense. Why do they show some guy on a skateboard with a glass Coca-Cola bottle and that makes no sense? It's because skateboarding is younger. Coca-Cola in the glass bottle creates the feeling of knowing an ice cold Coca-Cola. Why do you think every single Coke in every commercial is dripping wet? It's because a, a perspiring bottle uh, shows and translates that it's ice cold and people want it to be ice cold. The The feeling of quenching your thirst when it's so hot out, all oh, this bottle is going to be wet because you have it. All of that is there for a reason. It's all there for a reason. And you being the little guy still have all of those reasons. You just have to find out who you're talking to and who you are. 
I'm telling you, once you know those two things, you can then advertise who you are to the people that you want to know. And I'm telling you, my avatar was a uh, 42 to uh, 63 year old uh, woman. It was a woman who had a dog and half a cat, basically. So most people had, some people had cats. That's how it works out. They have two younger kids who are in school. They uh, usually are wine drinkers. Um, they are uh, also a two-car household. Uh, the husband usually works more than 40 hours a week. Right? You're starting to piece together what it looks like. Well, if I know all that stuff, guess what? What, are that, what does that person want? Person wants more family time, maybe, right? They're an at home. Their kids go to school. Their husband works a lot. Well, we give you family time back. Because instead of cleaning the windows all weekend, you let us do that. And when weekend comes, it's time for your family. Who am I speaking to, right? You could talk to guys that way. Guys are like, okay, it's cool. Like, I get it. It's great in principle. But, I mean, there's different ways to speak to different people. You can throw out your classifications and, and, and uh, generalities, if you will, and say, well, there's always... Well, yes, of course there is. But the majority of people fill in the blank, Right? If you're talking about gifts and things and stuff, majority of women drink Starbucks. Majority of men do not drink Starbucks. Yes, guys go to Starbucks. But if you're going to give a Starbucks gift card, it's going to translate better for a woman. Just like women drink wine over men drinking beer. There is golf over movies you know there's little things like that that you can figure out and hone in and now you know who you're speaking to when you know who you're speaking to you can speak directly to them right if you're a soccer fan and i'm a football fan if i start talking in football you're not going to really listen very well because you're a soccer fan right find out who you're talking to but a big thing's a hook you need to get with an ad when you know who you're talking to and what you're talking about, you need to know what gets them to go click. What gets them to trigger a buy? The hook. The hook is the most important part. If you're sending emails, if you're sending emails out, and when you send an email out, the, the email is, open this email, or window cleaning. Well, why would somebody open that email? You have to get a hook. If you want an email opened, you have to have something that gets them to open the email. If you have a paper ad, you need something to get them to go to your website. Something to trigger them to call you. Something to trigger them or hook them in to scheduling an appointment with you. The hook is the call to action. Every ad needs a call to action. Limited time, right? This month only. Exclusive deal. Those little things are what translate why somebody needs to call you right now. Why they need to book something with you. Why they need to go to your website. Why they need to, to schedule right this second. Why they need to add gutter cleaning to their, their window cleaning, right? The hook. And it's not the hook that you think of. It's not the hook that would get you to buy because you're a window cleaner, right? You're a pressure washer. You're a janitorial person. You're, you're a maid or home services. Whatever, you're watching this. Don't speak to you. Speak to your avatar. What would get them to buy? A big thing with a hook, a big thing with a USP, a big thing with all of these ads is value. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the number one thing that people mess up, the number one way people mess this up is they think price, not value. Unfortunately, 
we're not our target market. A lot of us would not pay $75 an hour for somebody to come clean my windows, right? I just do it myself. I'm a window cleaner. So when you translate that, your only idea is price. But when you understand who you are, what you're selling, you understand your value. And I talk about this. I beat it like a dead horse. But I see it so many times. People show me their ads and they put stuff out there. I'm like, ah, 10% off, call right now. You can get $50 off with the 20 Nobody tells them why to choose them. They just tell them that it's going to be cheaper. Well, I'm not looking for cheap. This is a luxury. I'm not looking for the cheapest window cleaner. Yes, some people are. But most people aren't. And most people, even when they are looking for the cheapest, when you explain why they choose you and why you're a little bit more because of all this extra value the other guys don't offer, it just makes it like a complete, complete change. It's totally different. Totally different. When you can explain to somebody why you charge what you do. I always give this example. I'll, I'll kind of do it again, but if I was to sell you something right this second and you have to buy, it's just me and you, you have to buy something that I'm going to sell you three options. You pick the option. The first option is $1. The second option is 20 bucks. The third option is a thousand dollars. What are you going to pay? I'm not going to tell you what it is, but what are you going to pay? Well, most of you will say uh, 20 bucks because I don't want the cheapest, whatever it is. And I'm not paying a thousand because I don't know what it is, right? By the way, that is a perfect example of why the three, the packages works if you're not doing packages. That's another show. Some of you, a couple, are going to talk big game and go, well, I'm going to buy the thousand because I buy the best. No, you're not. Give me a thousand dollars right now. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You're not going to do it. You may not even have an AWC magazine subscription because it costs you $69 a year, right? But you have to show the value. If I tell you it's a brand new Ferrari, I have 100 Ferraris, brand new, all legit. What would you pay for them? Say, I only got five Ferraris left. What would you pay? Well, you'd be like, oh, I'll take all five at $1,000 a piece. Now that you know what it is, with Ferrari, it brings its own value, right? That just knowing what it is shows you the value because it's been ingrained in you. Now you're buying it for $1,000. Price doesn't matter. Five, twenty, hundred doesn't matter. Thousand, ten thousand. It does not matter on the price when you know the value. But before I say what it actually is, all you have to do is focus on price. So create that value. Know who you're speaking to, what you're selling. Get them to hook onto buying or a call to action because of your value. You have to know that value. By the way, on a completely side note, this goes for route, this goes for resi, this goes for commercial, this goes for all of it. The value of choosing you is exactly this. It is creating value so astronomical that it would be ridiculous to choose everybody else. When you talk about USP, USP is value, unique selling point. The reason why someone chooses you is your value is higher than somebody else, right? If I have two guys, two window cleaners, both dress the same, both look the same, both have this gr same great smile and personality. You talk to the first guy, let's go, oh, why would I charge? Why would I hire you? And they go, oh man, well, I am, uh, you know, if you, if you uh, get my service right now, it's $20 off. Okay, cool, and why would I choose you? And the next guy goes, well, we carry a $2 million insurance policy to make sure that everything is absolutely flawless and there is no possible way that you are risking anything. We have 100% satisfaction guarantee. You don't pay us a dime unless we completely satisfy you and all the needs for window cleaning. We have a seven-day rain guarantee. We guarantee against Mother Nature, so you don't have to worry about scheduling. Not only on all of that, all of our staff is 
going into our star program. So you know who you're getting. You may get a five star, the top tier person. You know that they've been trained. You know they've read books. You can see it clear as day on their on their picture ID that every employee wears. Every employee wears brand new nice polos. We take our shoes off and have the personality of a close friend. We've done thousands of your neighbors. We have 500 five-star reviews on Google. You could fill it in with anything that you have, all of your unique selling point, right? We won the most exclusive award in our town. We were rated number one window cleaning company in Smith County, right? We have more reviews of any window cleaning company in the state of North Carolina, right? These are big claims. But whatever your claim is, whatever unique point to you is, use it, right? We love business so much and bettering ourselves that we are in every single um, uh, BNI group, right? We are in every networking group in our entire county. We uh, donate more money to charity than any, like all of those things. You get done with all of it, and the other guy's standing there going, we're $20 cheaper. (laughs) Screw the $20. It would be stupid for me not to hire that guy. That guy's value is absolutely absurd. I know. I'm already guaranteed that this is going to be an amazing experience. Because it's not the cleaning, it's the experience. Right? Make it ridiculous that anybody hire anybody but you show them the value if one guy says well i'm 20 dollars less and they go to you and go why would i hire you and go well i'm a little bit more expensive but like i clean i clean windows good you know, okay well we're gonna go with the 20 dollar less guy because that's all i have to go on everybody cleans windows good You can't sell on how clean your windows are. No one cares, by the way. You have to find your hook. You have to find out who you're talking to, and then you have to show them the value. The value is your USP. One of the things that people really dislike about ads, though, is it's split testing. Split testing has to be done in ads has to be either you do it or somebody else does if you buy a template from wcr this is not an ad but wcr uh, our print department does have templates those templates have already been split tested so you don't have to go and re-split test them but if you're creating an ad yourself you need to create five ten ads small variances different pictures different layouts different colors different backgrounds different messages different call to actions different size fonts in different parts It is amazing the things that change people's perspective. And you need to split test them. You have an ad, you put an ad out, you change one thing, put an ad out. Did it do better or worse? If it did better, keep that thing, change one more thing. Did it do better or worse? Did worse, take that thing back to the original, change something else. What you're doing is, over the term of your company, you will eventually have a perfect ad. You'll always be split testing, obviously, seeing what triggers better for people, messages, call to actions, values, all that fun stuff. But it's always ongoing. The people I know who have the most successful campaigns are always changing. They're always split testing. Because again, if I create something and I give it to the masses, I want that to bring me back the highest ROI. A lot of people go, well, yeah, you know, I spent $1,000, I get $2,000 back. It's pretty good. I'll keep that. I'll do that all day long. Sure. But what if by split testing, you can get that up to $3,000, $4,000, $5,000? If you keep split testing, eventually it is so absolutely good that you're getting an ROI even in off season. But it takes so long to get there. Split test everything. Do not create a thing. An ad. You don't show it to anybody. You show it to just yourself. You go, I love this ad. You know, I love blue. I love blue. And there's those cliche blue water dots that everybody puts on everything. I like it. It looks good. And you send it out there. 
And then you go, oh, well, advertising doesn't work in my area. Not with my customers. You're absolutely wrong. If you think your customers are any different than anybody else's customers anywhere else in the world or country at least, you're wrong. It's what you're doing that's wrong, not your customers. I get that all the time. All the time. All the time. By the way, if you have angry emails, send them to jersey at windowcleaner.com. But let me explain this. It's the same thing with like water fed. People go, yeah, that works there, but not in my area. <laughs> we only do high-end homes. Yeah, so do I. So does the next guy. So does the other one. I know a guy who is in the third richest county in the entire nation who water feeds almost everything. He makes so much money on his jobs, it's absolutely absurd. Absurd. He's got a one-guy crew making $1,500 by noon. It's, it's stupid to me that that kind of money even comes out because I've never been able to achieve those kind of numbers. But it's the county. There's a lot of different things. But the way he advertises into his area is completely could be done anywhere. Right? Split test everything. Your area is not different. It's your ads or your way that you're marketing that is not good. Don't say that ads don't work. Don't say EDDM doesn't work. Don't say SEO doesn't work. That is all not individual. It's just your area. And track everything. How do you know what works if you don't track it? How do you know what works if you don't track it? A great thing is creating Facebook ads, right? This is different than building better ad ads in Facebook are interchangeable and they could be changed and split tested instantly. It's not like print. It's not like any of that. I talked a billion times about Monk SEO. If you're doing SEO, obviously call them. They're amazing. Like literally good, 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 good friend, amazing stuff. But I did a show a couple weeks back with uh, the guy who does the Facebook ads for Monk SEO. M Monk SEO, by the way, if you do SEO, awesome. That will rank your site better, but you can also have them do your Facebook ad campaign. And a big thing that they do is continually check Facebook ads. They manage your Facebook ads. People just think you create an ad, you put it out there, go, oh, really? Well, that ad worked or that ad didn't work. No. You put the ad out, go, that didn't work. That's not working. This is good. Changing this, doing this. You know, you're, you're continually changing things. That's what managing a Facebook ad is, right? His name's Ryan Johnson. who works with Monkis. Yo, if you want to go back, watch that. I'm not going to talk anymore on that. But split testing tells you what it is. On every single person I ever talked to, when we called, I always did every bidding over the phone. I would always ask, great, and uh, one last question. How did you hear of us? Now, if you're doing a lot of ads, there's going to be lots of different things. But they're going to subliminally tell you the thing they remember most. Even if they saw, they got a mailer, they got a flyer, but your website popped up when they searched window cleaning and they saw your trucks around town, plus you do their Aunt Betty. When they tell you, oh, you know, actually I got a, uh, a postcard in the mail. It's because all of that worked towards that, but the one thing that rem they remembered is the postcard. The one thing they got to call to action was that postcard. They will tell you what it was. And a big, big thing that you can always do is when you have promo codes or any type of anything explanation wise on your postcard if somebody says oh you know i got that postcard oh great great uh yeah so on that postcard in the uh, uh bottom left there's a number what's that number say oh it's you know wc12 sweet awesome so that is and i know because i have all the codes the codes are different just postcards but that one is you know uh, you know, whatever the value is, uh, do a full interior exterior window cleaning and get a gutter cleaning for 99 bucks. Say that's your, your, your thing. Cool. That's the deal. That's the special right there. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Let's do that. Now I know I can split test everything. I can split test everything. And that's how I know SEO and websites always do the best. I know what my EDDM campaigns do. I know what my Facebook ads do. I could tell because I ask. If you're not asking, you're just going, well, I think stuff's working. That's doing really well. I really got, well, where's all your work coming from? I don't know. Well, then how do you know what you're putting money into? 
we split the test phone books. So last year we did phone books for you youngins. It used to be like a, a book with phone numbers. It was, it was, a uh, it was, uh, Google, but in a book anyway, last year I did Facebook and this is a uh, phone book. Last time I did that was, uh, 10 years ago. I think I got out of them last year. We went through all our numbers because we put everything split test, everything track, everything. And I got one call set out of phone book. It was like a $199 job. And, uh, we had spent like $800 a month on phone book ads. So, well, that obviously is not working. People go, well, you got to be in the phone book. I don't. Not for that. I'm not going to be in anything that I lose money on. I'm not contacting those people because I'm losing money. That doesn't make any sense. When I can do SEO and spend the same amount of money and make $130,000 worth of new work off of that one, you know, just my website. That makes a lot more sense than a phone book that doesn't bring anything. So you got to track everything, right? So know who you are, who you're talking to, know the hook that gets them to buy, create the value that lets them know you're the only choice. Split test all your ads and track everything. That's how you build a better ad. You're going to build a better ad. You're going to make more money. It's just going to work out better for you. So that's the show. But I digress. Again, I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. Wait, please let me put your orders in. I'm begging you. 862-312-2026. That's my cell. That really is my cell phone. Just text me and be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. Put it in. Costs you nothing extra. And I get credit for it. And it's absolutely amazing. And if you really, really, really want to be super duper amazing and awesome, go and get America Window Cleaner Magazine. Get the magazine subscription. It is once a year charge for monthly magazines. You get it every single month. It comes with a sticker sheet, all window cleaning stickers. It comes with posters, articles. It's just cool to read. It's just awesome to kind of be in the culture. So go and do that, awcmag.com. And yeah, until next time, build an amazing ad. Keep building an amazing ad. But more importantly, go out there and be epic.